let us now use a protractor to measure the angles of this triangle so first i take a protractor and i'm going to move this protractor such that this point what is that that is the vertex a it should basically match with the center of the protractor every angle you want to measure the vertex of that angle must match the center of the protractor and then this arm of this angle is matching with the baseline of the protractor then this is going to tell us that the angle a is 50 degrees now if i move the protractor that way then b is now matching with the vertex right vertex b is matching with the center of the protractor and this is the baseline so we're going to start counting from zero and we're going to count like this so as we count like this we reach 50 51 52 this line here that is 53 so angle b is 53 degrees okay okay so these two we were able to measure without turning the protractor around because the baseline was already matching with a b now if i want to measure angle c this is one of the arms that is another arm so the protractor must be turned to fit with this arm okay so we're going to turn the protractor around and the center now matches the vertex c and you can see that this is the baseline of the protractor so this is pointing to zero so if i want angle c i must start counting this way 0 10 20 we have reached 70 it's in the opposite direction it's pointing downwards but you can read it right it is 70 don't count this way count this way always count from the base of the protractor so this arm 0 so that's how i count so i count like this but this is only 70 this is 75 76 and so that line there is 77 so till here it is 77 degrees so angle c is 77 degrees okay let us now look at this triangles angles a little more closely 50 plus 53 103 103 plus 77 180 so if i add angle a plus angle b plus angle c i get 180 degrees let us see why this is angle a let me take angle b and move it this way okay so this is angle b let us take angle c turn it around you can see that this is almost fitting there let us move this down and see if it fits perfectly it fits perfectly so angle a plus angle c plus angle b forms a straight angle 180 degrees this is going to be true for every triangle we know about a right angle 90 degrees is a right angle but there are a lot of angles like this which are smaller than 90 degrees this one is only 40 degrees so angles that lie between 0 and 90 such angles are called acute angles there are also a lot of angles like this which are bigger than 90 degrees so if you look at angles that are more than 90 and between 90 and 180 such angles are called obtuse angles so an obtuse angle is usually 150 degrees 130 degrees 120 degrees larger than 90 and less than 180 they are called obtuse angles 0 to 90 it's called acute angles do we use acute and obtuse angles around us can we see them yes if you take this pencil this is 90 degrees look at the pointed end of the pencil clearly this angle is smaller than 90 degrees that is an acute angle if you take this piece of a watermelon this angle is an acute angle these two roads are parting ways the angle between the two paths is an acute angle and what about obtuse angles well if you are reading a book the edges of this book the angle between them that is an obtuse angle this hanger if you draw this angle this angle is an obtuse angle if you look at the letter k the angle between these two lines that is an 
obtuse angle. There are lots and lots of examples of acute, obtuse and of course right angles all around us. Try and notice them. I hope you have understood about angles, how to measure them and how to use a protractor to find out what that angles measure is. Thank you.